It begins as a dream to reach out to those who have suffered, a dream to share the love of Jesus Christ with the citizens of D'Iberville, Mississippi. Here in this small, close-knit community, we encounter those who have experienced the destruction and despair of Hurricane Katrina, those who have lost their homes but never their hope, whose perseverance in the midst of such desolation stands as a powerful testimony of hope and healing. This is the story of Project Forget Us Not, the dream brought to reality through the vision of gifted and caring servants and the power of the God who loves his people through his people. It is a story of homes rebuilt and lives restored, of friendships forged through the bonds of self-sacrifice and surrender, of eyes opened and new understanding gained in sharing the sorrows of the least of the kingdom of God. Words and images seem so inadequate to capture the suffering of those who have lived through Katrina. A tour of the city, even these many months since the disaster, leaves one awestruck at the devastating power of this massive storm. Many houses are still gutted and uninhabitable. Others are no longer there, their empty foundation slabs an eerie testimony to the sheer power of the wall of water that swept through the area. Huge trees, once majestic monuments to the spirit of Southern tradition, have been ravaged and ripped apart by high winds and floating debris, their branches strewn with pieces of clothing and plastic bags and left untouched due to the demands of more pressing matters. People continue to live in trailers provided by the government while others have set up house in front of sheds and shacks that had once housed tools and equipment. All around are gardens full of garbage and former family treasures, now rusted and caked with salty mud. But in the midst of such tragedy, there is hope. Hope in the form of volunteers who have chosen to give a small portion of their time, talent, and treasure to help with the rebuilding. They come as strangers from a group of churches and begin a week-long fellowship of prayer and preparation as they journey to Mississippi with open hearts and hands. It's the kind of openness that enables them to bond together as the body of Christ, to join as a family of faith. Some are seasoned missionaries, others are stepping out in faith for the first time. But slowly they get to know one another, the oneness of their purpose and the compassion within them, the power that joins them together. The first day in D'Iberville is spent recovering from the long bus ride and receiving the training they will need as they go out to do the work they will be given. Though the task before them is to rebuild houses, these believers also know that their real calling is to restore lives. Each day becomes an opportunity to share the gospel through work and words. They know that, just as they will be called to step into houses at different stages of repair, so too will they be stepping into lives at different stages of recovery. It is their compassion that will allow them to move through the duties of each day with brokenness rather than bitterness, faith rather than fear. It is the Spirit's fire that will empower them not to wait to be told what to do, but to see a need and meet it, one broken house and one broken life at a time. It is a time for work with intangible rewards, for friendships forged in a common connection, lasting memories, and rousing good times. Project Forget Us Not is much more than a mission trip. It's a time for finding beauty and giving and strength in the sweat of a hard day's work. But it's also a time for coming together in worship, 
of sharing insights and the little miracles witnessed each day, the kind that give birth to moments profound in their truth and awesome in the peace they bring as they are shared. It's the realization that throughout the storms of life, those that are literal and those that rage within, that God is ready to offer a day that is new to hearts that are open to His sovereign love and providential care. At each site, there are teams of workers, some skilled in carpentry or drywall, others in plumbing or roofing, some simply there to lend a strong back and helping hands to do whatever needs to be done. These adults and teens work side by side, cleaning out debris, installing drywall and cabinets, and climbing up onto houses in the blazing sun to install roofing. There is unity in their purpose, laughter in their labor, as they work for the glory of the Lord. No job is too small and no worker too young to find a part to play to complete the day's work. It is the body of Christ in action, each member doing his or her part without complaint. The work is hard, the days are long, but there is joy in what is being accomplished, and that joy manifests itself in the fellowship and fun at the end of each evening. Meals are shared with thanksgiving and laughter. Each day is closed out with the teens at play and the adults watching from the sidelines and sharing conversation with newfound friends. Such peaceful endings to days of purposeful labor and spiritual bridge building speak so clearly and so tenderly of the way of the Father, who knows how to give good things, purpose and pleasure, labor and love, reassurance and rest to the children he cherishes so very much. One of the highlights of the trip is spent with the members of our sister church as they meet to worship and celebrate the miracle story of how a congregation that had lost everything but its hope and its spirit had come to possess the land and the means to rebuild a new place of worship. Our host, Pastor Wayne Myers, shares his heart with his congregation and our group as we stand upon this hallowed ground being consecrated this very night. We hear the commitment this church makes before the Lord. From this day forward, whenever people gather in the sacred space, there will always be, in Pastor Meyer's words, enough gospel given so that a non-believer can come to Jesus Christ. It is an anointed commitment that can only be sealed by laying hands upon this faithful and steady shepherd, and afterward by joining hands in a circle of love, encompassing the ground that will one day shelter this wonderful and loving congregation. I will never, no, never, never, Throughout the week, there are times of sharing the great many accomplishments for the glory of God that have already taken place and expressions of hope for what is to come. We see the freedom that comes in sharing a burden with a brother or sister, a mysterious power that somehow makes that load a little lighter, more bearable, and more understandable. And it is seen all the more clearly as members of a roofing team take time to fellowship with a group of men and women who had worked with them side by side to restore a worship site designated for those involved in addictions recovery. Together we witness through testimony and song the power of the one who takes all our burdens to the cross and brings us as beloved children into the family of believers. The trip home is filled with one wonderful story after another of how God has worked so wonderfully in our hearts. There are tears of joy and tears of release as the full measure of the experience takes hold of our hearts. For some, it is a reminder of pain suffered and hope given. For others, it is a time to give a pat on the back to a brother or sister who had gone beyond the call. We remember our encounters, some dramatic, some quiet, with the people of the small Mississippi town, and we know we will never be the same again because of what we have shared. Project Forget Us Not is really about perspective, Perspective in relating, perspective in serving, perspective in seeing all things through the lens of eternity. In that keenly focused vision, God's objectives take the center stage and are viewed in terms of the greater good that only He can accomplish. Our own darkened ideas and standards and goals give way to the light of grace-filled living and surrender as we come to see what it means to be servants of the kingdom. True servants don't hesitate to answer the call to love in whatever form it needs to take, whether giving a listening ear 
or giving up our dignity to pick up trash, building a house or building up a brother or sister. True perspective allows us to lay before the master's feet all our needs and concerns, our passions and our hopes, and then to get going, looking forward with joyful anticipation for how he will meet those needs, for daily bread or building supplies, workers for the harvest or children of the kingdom, moment by precious moment of every day. Our prayer is that you too will consider a call to help us continue to serve the people of D'Iberville, Mississippi by joining with the Baptist General Conference and supporting Project Forget Us Not.